Welcome back. I'm Andre Rodriguez. And I'm Annabelle Earth. Today we have filmmaker, podcaster, and the creator of a Mandra Film Facebook page, Mark Reagan. Put your hands together. Hey. Hello, hello. How are you doing? Hello, Mark. Thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Mm. I've always spoken to you on uh, social media and online, but this is the first time we actually met face to face. Yeah. It's also, I'm on the nice. back foot here. Uh, a little bit, yeah, just a little bit. I'll just um, relax though. <laughs> it's finally good to see you in the flesh. No, it is, it is. Yeah. How's uh, filmmaking coming along? I know you're doing um, a short film now. Yeah, so uh, we're in pre-production of a short called Harold the Plumber. Mm. It's a dramedy comedy about a self-proclaimed idiot plumber that drinks toilet water and becomes an instant genius. Uh, so we're in the pre-production phase of that. Cast is locked, crew is locked. June shoot day in Mandra. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, super pumped, super excited to get in there and start shooting. That's the fun part. Now I, I need forward to watch it. it. Yeah, that, that sounds, sounds fun, so it? crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I hope that's a great reaction. I'm getting that reaction from that log line, which is great feedback. Okay. It's getting me I'm excited. I'm curious now. I have to see and it. I think the last one that I saw was The Memory, which you did win some awards for that as well, didn't you? Yeah, so The Memory's been, I've done a 12-month uh, film festival strategy. So mm. uh, it's a, that's a very different film to Harold the Plumber. It's a psychological thriller. Yeah. And it's a bit of a triggering story as well to some people. And so, uh, because it does deal with like sexual assault. Um, and it, yeah, it's sort of deep. It's deep in its meaning. Uh, to do with like perception and belief in oneself. Um, so yeah, I've done this idea of a 12 month festival strategy, international Australia, uh, entered about 35 festivals, had 12 selections and about four sort of nomination finalist awards so far. So it's gonna run till July this year, 2021. Okay. And then I'll just basically put it on all the platforms. So it'll just be free to watch from there. Yeah, nice. That's incredible. Yeah. Are you going to do the same for Harold the Plumber? Yeah, I'm going to go the same sort of strategy. I figure that it will be uh, because you've got to kind of match films to festivals. That's something that I've really learned uh, with okay. the memory. And not all festivals want to see every single film that's out there or they have a topic in mind or a theme. And so the idea of uh, Harold, even though it's an organic idea that came to me and I, I developed into the script, it's actually something's much more family friendly. So I think it will be a bit more accommodating to more festivals than the memory was. Oh, yeah. I found the memory, once you start looking into some of the festivals, I just knew straight away that it would not get in, it wouldn't bypass that first selection on that festival. Yeah. And you were saying there was something you learned through time. So yeah. what was happening? You were submitting the, the films and then they weren't getting selected. Did you get any feedback as to why they weren't selected or you just came to that? That, conclusion. That, that, yeah, that was my conclusion, so mm. to speak. It's a pretty cold world, the film festival, <laughs> entering a film. You, sometimes you just get like an email rejection. Sometimes you get a little bit of feedback. A lot of the time it's a very generic feedback email, you know, just saying, oh, thanks for your wonderful film, but it hasn't been selected. You know, you don't really get feedback. Um, but it was just more, yeah, realising that, like looking deeper into... You know, going to the festival websites and understanding like when are they playing the festival, who's their audience, who mm. are they targeting, um, what kind of films have they selected in previous years, um, and then seeing if my film matched that. So it was just a learning experience. Whereas I sort of thought, hey, here's a film I made, let's put it on the film festival circuit. All film festivals will love it. They'll select it. They'll put it out there. Mm. Uh, but no, just suddenly realizing <laughs> that festivals are much more tailored. You know, and okay. uh, so that was like the lesson. Yeah. Good. And you also do podcasting. Yes. What's, tell us a bit more about um, the podcast. Yeah, so it's a <laughs> podcast called Space Brains, and we look at science fiction films specifically. I'm with a co-host, a writer called Surrey Hughes. He's written some books, so he's a self-published author. Uh, he's a real science guy, and I'm the film guy. And so on our podcast, we look at what's good and great about science fiction films. In tonight's episode of Space Brains, we will reveal what we thought about the film, the ins and outs of narrative and film language, plus a deep dive into a specific piece of science that the filmmakers are proposing. Love and Monsters was directed by Michael Mathers, and it was written by Brian Duffield and Matthew Robinson, based on a story by Brian Duffield. So I'm guessing you obviously like 
science fiction movies, yeah. is yeah. there one or two that like, stand above the rest that you would 100% recommend people have to see? Well, because I'm a little bit older, 2001 Space Odyssey, oh, Kubrick. Yeah, uh, mm. I mean, how can you kind of go past that one? <laughs> um, that one kind of just blows your mind in many, many ways, mm. as Kubrick has always done for, for me as a filmmaker. Uh, Alien, you know, is incredible. Um, as It just does everything right. Like, there's nothing <laughs> wrong with Alien. You know, it's scary, but it's also really sciencey in the way that they have taken this kind of corporation into space. You're talking about so, the earlier ones or the later ones? The very original Alien. The very original, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I mean, <laughs> Aliens is also fantastic. It's the thing. I think as they go down the, you know, um, what do they call it? Uh, franchise of yeah. films probably gets a bit different and you know so to speak but that first alien is an incredible like thriller horror science fiction film you know so i remember, I remember seeing the uh the animal come up on the chest yeah. the alien off the chest <laughs> oh, the first time I'm like, yeah. oh no. it was still and young then yeah. do you know what they did to the actors in that scene was john i think it's john hurt i'm pretty sure um so he's the one that the alien comes out yeah they didn't tell the rest of the actors what was going to actually happen sure. and so he knew what was going to happen that this thing was going to like pop open but the rest of them didn't and so and it was just like roll camera we're rolling the whole scene we're going for it and he starts doing his thing and they were like going oh okay like you know this is good and then when it explodes and you'll see it if you look really closely when the blood splatters all over them and stuff they're actually in sheer terror what, like, <laughs> what is this we didn't know that this was in the script they deliberately hid it from them so yeah it's a kind of really cool idea i reckon I mean, you've done this for a while. You're doing very well. Do you have any advice for anyone, you know, up and coming or just looking to get into the business? And how did you go about it? Uh, well, you've got a couple of questions there. I no. do. <laughs> I talk a lot. No, that's good. It's good. <laughs> um, I think one piece of advice is use what you got, right? Mm -hmm. So whether that's, and we all walk around now with, cameras in our pockets, the mobile phone. Mm, and, yes. you know, whereas in my generation, we didn't have access to that. So for me, when I was like 12 years old, that's when I started writing. And all of us have a piece of paper and a pen. Like you can get access to that and you can write. So you can write a story really for nothing. It's just your time. Um, to make a film, like when I was a teenager, I, my dad's work had this old little VHS kind of camera. And so I begged him to borrow it. No one was using it at his workplace. And then so he'd bring it home on the weekend and I started shooting stuff. And that's, that was the beginning for me. Like I just got really hooked into that and I was filming me, I was filming my siblings, I was filming my parents and I was writing these stories and making it. Um, and then just recently, you know, due to COVID all happening, I was quite frightened to go full steam ahead into a production of a proper short film and then have to cancel stuff. So mm. I just put the challenge to myself, like why don't I make a film by myself with my mobile? And so that's what I did. And I made a film called Stickman. I, I just put it online about two months ago. It's like a little found footage horror film. That's what I just did. Like I just literally went out into the woods, mobile phone, what can I do here? <laughs> and then I'll just piece it together. And you know, like, yeah, it's been shot in a mobile by myself. There's no lights, camera, anything like that, apart from the mobile phone. But I'm reasonably happy with the end result. And that was my experiment. And so I think that's a really good piece of advice is just, just use what you've got. Like you don't need the highest end camera, editing suite, lights, whatever. You just need to get out there and, and make stuff. So when's the next feature film? Oh, when is the <laughs> first feature, feature film? film? The first feature film. Well, I've right. written, in the last four years, I've written three feature film scripts and okay. um, I've entered them into some competitions. Uh, the latest one got me to an Australian Directors Guild conference where I got to pitch it to an audience mm. and they gave me like instant feedback and the feedback was really positive. Um, and I also then took that feedback and entered the, I think it was the fast pitch competition with Screen West and got some feedback from NBC over in Sydney. It was really interesting that because it was like, you know, I didn't get accepted. I wasn't like the finalist, the, the award winner. But they said, oh, you can find out feedback. I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, give me some feedback. Yeah, <laughs> and then like the head of CEO is on the phone to me going, yeah, we like this about the script and we think this. We're not sure if that's our target audience. Maybe you should try this company and this company. I'm like, great, this is fantastic advice. That would have been so valuable. Yeah, it was. I was so surprised that he was willing to just literally have that mm. conversation with me. But he was, and he was really encouraging. He's like, if you've got other ideas, you know, send them through. You know, you've got my email now. Give me an idea. Pitch me an idea. I'm like, okay, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I know it's been a long trek. We really appreciate you making the time. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us.
Awesome. And what's mm. on this week? So this week, you guys can check out the West Australian Opera in concert at His Majesty's Theatre on mm. the 7th of July. Um, you can get complimentary tea, so you may as well book your ticket. Um, you can find that at ptt.wa.gov.au. Hi guys, thank you so much for watching the show. Don't forget to like, subscribe and click the notifications bell to be up to date on all of our content. And please comment below and check out our socials, the descriptions are down below. We also like to thank our sponsors, Malaga Print and Signs. And for all your social media needs, please contact Karen and Vicky, whose links will be at the bottom of this page as well. I'm Annabelle yeah. Earth. And I'm Andre Rodriguez. And, and this, this is, is in 5. five. Don't forget to tune in next week, guys. See ya. See ya. Where's the goodbye? Come on. We don't need a goodbye! <laughs>